Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a look at this, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. Now, this was launched in November 2018 by the Raspberry Pi Foundation and is in effect a cut-down version of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. So let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have our exciting little box of newer Raspberry Pi goodness. So uh, let's get inside, shouldn't be too hard, easy to get into a, a Pi normally. Straight, oh, we have instructions. That's a bit of a shock, isn't it? But uh, also in here, I hope, yes, we've got an anti-static bag with the, the board itself. Russell, Russell, Russell. And uh, there we are. Here we have the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus, which, uh, it's exciting. I've never owned a Raspberry Pi Model A before, so it's very exciting to see a Pi in this form factor. And uh, as you can see, it's a, a very, very slim Pi, very, very slender Pi there. And I think we should look at this in the context of the other Pis currently in the range. So if we go over here, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus and a Raspberry Pi Zero. And if we bring in the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus, put it in the middle there, you can see it, it fits in beautifully. The Raspberry Pi Foundation really know what they're doing, don't they? You can see that the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus is the same width as the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, and uh, it's clearly got the same mounting holes, it's the same width, and it's also the same length as, as the Raspberry Pi Zero. There's a beautiful set of, of design principles being applied here. And we look in terms of the price, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus is currently got a retail recommended price of about $35, comes to about £32 in the UK, whereas the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus, this new board, is got a retail of $25, comes to about £23 in the UK. The Raspberry Pi Zero on the end here depends which one you've got. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero 1.0. This is the first ever Raspberry Pi Zero. This did sell in theory for about a $5 or £4. We then had the Raspberry Pi Zero 1.3, which has got a camera connector here. Then we had the Raspberry Pi Zero W with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then we had the Raspberry Pi Zero W H, which has got the headers as well. So it depends which zero you get in terms of the price. Uh, you really stick your fingers in the air and hope in terms of what the price of this board is these days. But it seems to be somewhere around sort of 10 to $15, around £10 for various models of zero. So you can see, I haven't told you all of that, but the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus sits in the middle of these boards in, in terms of price. Sort of basically, we've got about $35, $25, $10 to $15, depending on the model. Now, you might be thinking, what therefore is the A plus 4? And I guess it's for people who want the power of a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B plus, but they want it in a smaller form factor, consuming less power with a bit less connectivity, but more power than the Raspberry Pi Zero. And having said that, I think the best thing to do now is to look at the specs of this board. So let's take it and put it by itself again. And uh, here we go. Here's our lovely new Raspberry Pi 3 Model A plus. And when thinking about its specs, as with any other single board computer, the first thing to do is to mention the system on the chip. And here this is a Broadcom BCM2837B0, exactly the same system on a chip as we find on the Raspberry Pi 3 model B+. And this is a 64-bit quad-core system on the chip. It's got four ARM Cortex-A53 cores, and these clock at up to 1.4 gigahertz, at least when the board is running below 70 degrees C. And then above 70 degrees C, the board will drop back to 1.2 gigahertz, and then above about 80, 82, it'll throttle as, as it requires to stop itself burning up. And in addition to the A53 cores, we've also got the GPU on the system on the chip, which is the standard video core 4 GPU we find on Raspberry Pis. The board's also got some memory, of course. It's got some RAM. Here it's got 512 megabytes of LPDDR2 SD RAM, and that is the big difference between this board and the, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. This has got half a gigabyte of RAM to compared to one gigabyte on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. We've also got wireless networking on the board. Hiding beneath this little metal Raspberry, we have a 802.11ac Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth 4.2. And then if we look at the front of the board, we find a micro USB connector for power input and the recommended power adapter for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus is a 5 volts at 2.5 amps. And next to that, we've got the full size HDMI connector supporting a 1920-1080 as we do on all Pis. Next to that, we've got the CSI camera connector so we can connect a Raspberry Pi camera to this board 
and we can do so using the full-size Raspberry Pi camera cable rather than the smaller cable we use on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And then finally on this edge, we've got our TRRS jack, our 3.5 millimeter jack, which gives us stereo audio output. Although do be aware this is a Raspberry Pi, so the quality of the audio output is not brilliant from the board itself. And we also have composite video out from this connector as well. And it's still nice to have this on this board. If we move around the corner, we find we have a single USB 2.0 type A socket. And in this context, it's worth remembering that all Raspberry Pis effectively have just one USB 2.0 interface. It's just that on other boards like the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, there's an onboard hub that splits that port out that distributes its bandwidth between four ports. And that's worth remembering because it means if you get the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus and you connect a hub to this port and connect multiple devices to it, you'll get the same speed from those devices as if you connected those devices to a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Rotating around again, we find a 40-pin GPIO connector. This is, of course, a Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO connector. It has to be. It's on a Raspberry Pi. If we didn't find a 40-pin Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO connector on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+, the world would have gone even more bonkers when it's gone today, wouldn't it? Anyway, enough of the world's woes, and moving around to the last edge, we find a DSi connector, a display screen interface connector, to which you could connect an LCD display. If you want to have a look under the board, we can of course do that. Don't want you to think you missed out on anything here. Here's the underside of the board. Not a great deal to see here. The main thing to point out is we've got the micro SD card slot. And of course, I'll soon be putting a micro SD card into this with Raspbian installed so we can test the board out. But uh, there we are. That's the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. Plus. Oh, I've got it upside down. Dear me, don't want the board getting confused. This is, a, this is a lovely new Pi. You can probably tell I really like this new Pi. And again, to come back to the issue of what would you use this board for? Why would you get this board rather than the Raspberry Pi Zero or a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus? And I guess the big thing is this board is intended for people who want to use a Pi in a confined space. It is, as I said earlier, a very, very thin Pi. It's a great board to use it in embedded applications, in projects, for things like a robot controller if you need a bit more power than a Raspberry Pi Zero. And it'd be a good board, for example, to have a, a camera attached to. You might remember a few videos back, I made a system we're using Motion iOS and a Raspberry Pi to turn the Raspberry Pi into a remote network camera. This would be a great board for you for that type of application. So this is very much, I think, an Internet of Things, an embedded Pi type of board. And in that context, it's worth noting that the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus will be in production until at least 2023. Anyway, for me, having said all of that, and I want to test this out as a little desktop PC running Raspbian, so let's go and get the board running. Right, I've now got the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus and got it all connected up, and here we're booting into Raspbian. And uh, this is the November 2018 version of Raspbian. I've yet to really uh, test it out yet. So it's nice to see Raspbian continuing to evolve alongside the Pi. I guess it has to. There has to be a new version to support the new hardware. And uh, here we are on the Raspbian desktop. And this is not my first boot. I have gone in and just sort of set things up. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are working up there. And I've done a few changes to uh, resolutions and font settings to make things work nicely on the screen. So let's just take a little look uh, at Raspbian. It's always good to see how it's evolving. We can see here that Python is now defaulting to version 3 for idle. Had to happen eventually. Uh, other things here are pretty much as we would expect. Still got the Chromium browser. Um, accessories have changed a little bit. We've now got a, a SD card copier. Maybe I've missed that being there previously, but that's very handy. So you can now back up your SD card for a Raspberry Pi within the operating system. You can simply select the SD card there, and then you'd have to have a SD card writer plugged into a USB port. Not quite so easy on a Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+, Plus, because of course only one port, you'd need a hub. But it does mean on, on most Raspberry Pis you can fairly straightforwardly now back up the SD card inside the operating system. That's really handy. The other thing we've got uh, here I thought we'd bring up is the uh, Task Manager, which will show us how resources are being used. Remember, we've got less memory here than on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. But even so, we've not got too bad a use there. We've got lots of free memory sitting over there. Let's uh, launch some software and see the implications of that. Let's uh, bring up, say, Chromium. Known to hog memory a little bit. Quite as much as it used to, but still a reasonably big program. Oh, yes, memory's going up. Use there as uh, Chromium 
comes along, yes, quite considerably. Let's go to a, a normal website we test out. Not exactly a memory intensive website, but we now look, reasonable amount of memory has been taken up now we're using Chrome. And, uh, oh, I know, let's do uh, that and we can go to an Amazon, open that in a new tab. Amazon is quite a intensive page. And yes, memory use is going up and up, but uh, still a couple of tabs running, not too bad. And uh, let's also run up, um, I don't know, uh, LibreOffice Writer. I'm sure some of you are commenting now and saying, Chris, we don't want to use this as a little desktop PC. It's not what it's for. But anyway, I just want to see how, it's, how it performs. And uh, LibreOffice is going to come up eventually, isn't it? Yes, there it is. And um, we've got a test document I think we have. Um, oh, that was worth loading in, wasn't it? Yes, anyway, we have it so working. What's going on with Chrome then? No, we don't want to do that. I don't know, Amazon always trying to sell us things. Anyway, there we are. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus clearly works very nicely in Raspbian. You get a very uh, slick experience, just as you do on the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. So uh, the Raspberry Pi A Plus is certainly a very nice uh, addition to the Raspberry Pi family. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus is a great little single board computer. The Raspberry Pi Foundation have also made it clear that it'll be the last Pi to be released in the original or classic Pi family, and this is hardly a surprise. Since 2012, we've seen lots of different models of Raspberry Pi, but they've all had high levels of backwards compatibility. However, to add new features to the Pi, things like more memory, USB 3, Gigabit Ethernet, maybe lots of exciting other things, the Raspberry Pi Foundation will have to make architecture changes. And that's why the next Pi we see is going to be of a second generation. Now, we can all debate what will be on that Pi and what it'll be called. I guess for ages we thought it'll be called the Raspberry Pi 4, but I've been pondering on this and maybe it won't be called the Raspberry Pi 4. Maybe they'll give it a slightly different name to distinguish between the classic generation of Pis and the second generation of Pi, which will start with the next board. Anyway, we will all see what happens. It's interesting thinking about what will happen in the future with the Raspberry Pi Foundation and their new boards. I hope we'll get a new board in 2019. Fingers crossed for that. But uh, now that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.